This video will be focused on the interference of waves. We will begin by introducing the principle of superposition before moving on to a discussion about wave interference. We will explore how phase difference and path difference affect the interference of waves. This video will end with a short discussion about the formation of standing waves. Suppose that we have two wave pulses with positive displacement produced in the same row which are travelling towards each other. As the pulses approach each other, the pulses begin to overlap and the overall disturbance becomes larger. However, after the pulses have overlapped each other, the pulses will continue to travel along the rope and emerge unchanged on the other side. So it appears that the pulses have moved through each other as if they never met at all. Now let's contrast this with the motion of solid objects colliding with each other. When two boxes moving towards each other collide, they bounce off each other with no overlap, and they move off in different paths to their initial motion. Hence the interaction of wave pulses with one another is different from the interaction of solid objects. The resultant wave from two or more waves meeting at some point in space is described by the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition states that when two or more waves of the same type meet at a given point in space at the same time, the resultant displacement at that point is equal to the vector sum of the displacements of the individual waves. So let's consider this freeze frame of the animation in more detail. The blue and orange dashed lines show the individual wave pulses during superposition, and the black line shows the resultant displacement. In region 1, the orange pulse has a non-zero displacement, and the blue pulse has zero displacement, so the resultant pulse is just the orange pulse. Similarly, in region 3, the resultant pulse is equal to the displacement of the blue pulse. Now if we consider region 2, we get a resultant pulse that is equal to the sum of the displacements of the blue and orange pulses. For example, at this point here, the orange pulse has an upward displacement of 1 grid square, and the blue pulse has an upward displacement of 3 grid squares, giving a resultant pulse of 4 grid squares from the principle of superposition. We could do the same analysis for any point along the interaction. In particular, this is an example of constructive interference, which occurs at any point where the two overlapping waves have a displacement in the same direction. Constructive interference results in a wave with a larger amplitude than any of the individual waves. The principle of superposition can still be applied when one of the wave pulses has a negative displacement. As the positive and negative pulses approach each other, we get a resultant displacement that is smaller in amplitude than the individual displacements. In particular, there is an instant where the pulses will cancel each other when they totally overlap since they have the same amplitude. This is known as destructive interference and occurs at any point where the two overlapping waves have a displacement in opposite directions, resulting in a wave with a smaller amplitude than any of the individual waves. We will now explore the conditions required for constructive or destructive interference to occur. One of the conditions is known as phase difference, which is dependent on how much a wave is in front or behind another wave, and is measured in degrees. In this animation, the black wave shows the resultant wave of the blue and orange waves interfering as a result of the principle of superposition. When the phase difference between the blue and orange waves is varied, we can see that the amplitude of the black resultant wave also varies. Now there are two scenarios of particular note. The first one occurs when the two waves are aligned with each other. Here, the simple harmonic oscillations of the particles of the two waves have a phase difference of zero degrees, and the waves are at the same point in their cycles at the same time. So the waves are said to be in phase with each other. And moreover, constructive interference of the waves will be maximised when the waves are in phase. As a side note, a phase difference of 360 degrees is equivalent to a phase difference of 0 degrees. The second scenario occurs when the crest of one wave aligns with the trough of the other wave. Here, one wave is half a wavelength behind the other, resulting in the oscillations of the individual particles of the waves having a phase difference of 180 degrees at any point. The waves are said to be completely out of phase, or in antiphase with each other. In addition, if the two waves have equal amplitude, then the two waves will fully cancel out as a result of destructive interference. 
We will now discuss the concept of path difference and how it can result in a phase difference between two waves. Let's consider two identical sources which emit waves of wavelength lambda that are in phase and focus on this point P. The point P is at a distance D1 from source 1 and a distance D2 from source 2. We can see that in this case D1 is equal to 3 wavelengths and D2 is equal to 2 wavelengths. We can now define a quantity called path difference, which is the difference in distance of the point in consideration from the two sources. For point P, the path difference is equal to the difference between D1 and D2, which has a value of one wavelength. Notice how the waves are in phase when they meet at point P. So a path difference of lambda results in constructive interference. In general, constructive interference is maximized at all points where the path difference is equal to an integer multiplied by the wavelength. For example, the two sources could be aligned with each other, resulting in a path difference of zero. Or the two sources could be separated by a path difference of two lambda. In all of the cases shown, the waves arrive in phase at each of the given points, so constructive interference of the two waves is maximized at these points. There is a similar condition on the path difference which gives destructive interference. In particular, complete destructive interference occurs at all points where the path difference is equal to any integer plus one half times the wavelength. So let's consider the same two sources emitting waves of wavelength lambda in phase at these positions and focus on this point Q. The distance from source 1 is 3 wavelengths and the distance from source 2 is 2.5 wavelengths which results in a path difference of lambda over 2. Notice here that the troughs of the wave from source 1 align with the crest of the wave from source 2, so the two waves are out of phase and will interfere destructively. Another example of destructive interference is given below, where the path difference is equal to 1.5 lambda. An application of wave interference is the formation of standing waves. A standing wave can be formed when two waves with the same wavelength and amplitude travelling in opposite directions superpose. Using the principle of superposition, when the two waves are in phase, they add together, and when they are 180 degrees out of phase, the waves cancel out. As they pass through each other, the black standing wave is formed. Notice how the waves are interfering in such a manner that there are some points on the standing wave that always have a displacement of zero and appear to be fixed at the same positions. These points are called nodes and are spaced half a wavelength apart. At the nodes, the waves are always in antiphase, meaning that destructive interference always occurs at these points and causes the waves to fully cancel out. In addition, there are points on the standing wave called antinodes in between each pair of nodes that oscillate with maximum amplitude. At antinodes, the maximum amplitude of oscillation is achieved when there is constructive interference. But notice how destructive interference also occurs at these points, since the waves fully cancel out at specific instances of time. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. When waves interfere, they do so according to the principle of superposition, which states that when two or more waves meet, the resultant displacement is the sum of the individual displacements. Constructive interference occurs whenever waves overlap and have displacements in the same direction, and is maximised if the waves are in phase with each other. Waves from two sources will be in phase if the two waves have a path difference of an integer multiplied by the wavelength. Destructive interference occurs whenever waves have opposite displacements, and waves with equal amplitudes will fully cancel out if they have a phase difference of 180 degrees. For waves created by two sources, a path difference of any integer plus one half times the wavelength will result in destructive interference. Finally, standing waves are formed from the interference of identical waves travelling in opposite directions, and consist of points of zero amplitude called nodes, and points of maximum amplitude called antinodes. This now concludes our video about wave interference and standing waves. Thank you for watching.